so good evening guys so uh so now we will be starting the jenkins day 13 session and uh, once again thank you all for joining the session because morning also you had to go, uh, join and again evening you're joining and uh, we'll be continuing with uh, the jenkins with the parameters actually right what are parameters so before you getting into the parameters here right so what uh, i was trying to tell here that actually that if you're going to any free sale project like for example I have a free sale project. So let me go into the free sale. I have a game of life. This is a free sale project. If I go to the configure here, this is a free sale project. And you could see here that uh, you're having, under the general, you're having something that this project is parameterized. It means that you can actually pass a parameter or you can set a parameter here. Okay, we can set the parameter here. Now, <coughs> We'll come up across this later after some point of time. But if you come down and if you come over here and you could see that if I in the build step, if you are trying to invoke the shell or execute the shell, now you could see that it is showing there are a list of all the environment variables. So when I, die, when I do a right click on and when I open this, so you could see that these are all the variables which are being internally used by your Jenkins itself. So these are nothing but these all are global variables, guys. Okay, so there are a lot of global variables are there. So you can use any one of the global variables, right? Uh, in your uh, uh, in your uh, work or else you can define your node variable also. Like you have some like a job name, job underscore base name, build ID, build number. So let me don't think, let me display some value of this, all these variables. So let me copy the job underscore name, come over here. And if, if I do an echo, Okay, echo space. Okay, hold a second. Yeah, what happened? So here it is taking up echo space dollar. Yeah, it's already there. So, okay, space dollar. Is it guys? Uh, I will take something like a build ID or build number. So, this is one variable. I'm just trying to print this value. And one more is something like, yeah, you can even display gen control and score, or else you can even display the job name also. And when I do a uh, apply, and save and we run the job like when you run the build now <coughs> so it is already executed so you could see that there's a build at build number is three and it has successfully executed come over here we could see that it is showing that the build number or nothing but three fine and the project name or nothing but your uh your uh, job name right name is nothing but it, it is displaying this as a job name Right, game of life one. So you are using some of your using you can use this variables everything within your Jenkins job also. So these are all the predefined variables which are provided by your Jenkins. So how you'll get to know if you go to the configuration and here you could see that it shows you the list of all the variables. See the list of all available in one variables. These are all in one variables. Okay, along with an in one variable, you can also define your own variables also and you can pass it actually. How to do that? It means that suppose you need to pass any parameters or you want to pass any value to the job itself, then you need to make your job as a parameterize. It means that you need to pass some parameter. They come over here. And if you go to the general section, you could see that this project is parameterized, right? Now, you know very well that in the morning time when we discussed about the declarative pipelining, right? In the declarative pipeline, you could see that there's one section of the parameters. It means that Suppose you want to pass any kind of a value to this statement, whatever is there inside the steps, you can pass the parameter here. So you can specifically define the parameters here. So parameters plays a very vital role in writing the playbook, not sorry, in writing the free shell projects or into the declarative projects. By parameters are very much useful actually. <coughs> okay. So here in the game of life, what I will do that, I'll just click on this project is parameterized and you could see that it is showing something like add parameter. Okay. 
something like add parameter. So if you come over here and you could see that there are different types of parameter what you can pass, Boolean parameter, choice, credential parameter, file mat parameter, right? Like that and you are, even you are having a string parameter, something like that, right? So you can even click on the string parameters like this. You can give the name of the string parameters. What is the name you want to give? You can give any name, like for example, you can just say something like you are uh, you are passing some uh, you know like uh, job name actually so something job underscore name that already we have that variable but still you can define your own variable right or else you can just say uh, anything like for example build number or build id something like that actually so what is the default value okay if nothing is there you can pass it as a zero okay and you can just copy this and paste it here like this in the description also same thing you're doing trim the string this we will see later what is this trim the string suppose if there is any space after your variable name so suppose your mistake is given it will trim it and it will make sure the spaces are deleted within that variable here what are the what are the string what happens this is a string parameter similarly what happened right you can even have one more parameter like for example if you add parameter there is something like a choice parameter so you know that when you are trying to call a Maven build, right? When you're calling a Maven, you can pass anything like MVN clean, MVN package, MVN compile like that, right? So can we use a choice parameter like that? Yeah, let us see, right? Something like goals is there, right? Goals, what are the choices? Like for example, you have compiled, you have a package, then you have a clean package. These are all the, you know, these are all the parameters or these are the choice parameters, right? So this is choice, but this is heavily used uh, a lot of time. So description like choice <coughs> parameter, parameters used for Maven actually, something. Come down, that's all. And what happened, right? This is just the parameters which you are using, right? apply and save it now what happened right as soon as apply and save it can you see something like earlier you had a build now now you are having something like a build with parameters click on this can you see it filled with parameters it is showing you uh, here you can pass the build number or the request number something you can pass the request number or the build number like that and here you could see the goals right the choice parameter having these three choice parameters so you can select any one thing and you can actually run the build job Basically, what happened? You are you are using a variable, but it will not. What happened? It will not. Uh, you know, it will not. It will not. Uh, you, it will not do anything because you are just a defined one variable. That's all. If you want to uh, show what exactly you are passing along for this choice parameter or for this uh, build ID parameter, you can again go to the configure, right? And here, uh, not build something request ID. Something request ID this is used to pass some request number something and come down here and here you can actually display the value like if you come over here you can remove this you can remove and you can just say dollar request what is that guys request underscore what is the request underscore ID and then you have goals request underscore ID is it uppercase or lowercase? What is it? It is uppercase. Uh, it's okay. Request ID and then you can even display the goal, whatever. Apply and save it. So now if you do a build parameters, here you need to pass the build number, request ID, something 100 you will passing, something. And you are just passing the clean package like that. And you say build. Nothing will happen here. You know very well that it is only, it will take the value whatever you are passing it and see, you could see that. So the request rate is 100 and here you should display echo dollar of your goal actually. Why it is not displaying? I think I did some mistake here. G-O-A-L-S goals actually. Yes. I just typed G-O-L. So just I want to correct it. See G-O-A-L-S goals. So now build with parameters. Give the request rate is 101 and the goal as clean package and say build. See? It has passed, nothing is there. So click on this. You could see that it is displaying whatever the whatever the parameter which you are passing as a charge parameter, right? That is getting displayed. 
<coughs> like this. Now you would say that, sir, can I use this kind of a choice parameter and everything in your uh, uh, in your uh, scripted pipeline? Yes, you can do it actually. Like for example, uh, today morning we had written a declarative pipeline, right? So what we did, like in your node two, in our node two, I think I already opened the node two. Yes, there's a Spring Pet Clinic is there. So this is a job actually, Spring Pet Clinic. So if open the Jenkins, now you could see that actually that here you mentioned the triggers, you have mentioned all the options, everything, and you can even pass the parameters also. How to pass a parameter? You have to go to your Jenkins reference actually. So Jenkins pipeline syntax, go here, and if you Click on this first link and uh, here what happened guys, if you come over here, can you see here it has something like a parameters? Yes. Click the parameter. See, the parameter director provides a list of parameters that you user should provide while triggering the pipeline. The value of this of this user different parameters are not are made available uh, pipeline via the param objects. Okay, fine. So is it required? No, it is not mandatory to pass it, but still, yeah, you can do it. See, you could see that the, the parameter types are string parameter. You can pass string text, uh, Boolean parameter. Choice parameter. Okay, this is what I need. So it means that I need to pass the choice parameter. Correct, guys? Okay. One second. So I need to pass a choice parameter. So for the choice parameter, I have to just say parameter, choice, name, choice name, and the choices like this. And if you want to pass in a description, even you can pass the description also like this. So this is what you need to pass in your, uh, you know, when if you want to make use of in your, uh, this one, right? In your uh, uh, declarative pipeline, you need to use the choice parameter, okay? So coming back here, I'll go to the server here, yes. Now what happened, right? After the triggers, see here, what I can do? Parameters. Okay. And then what I'm doing that I'm using the open bracket. Okay. And then let me write inside it. What is it guys? So I'm using something like a choice of name. So I'm just copy pasting that choice of name. What is the name? So you'll just say that, okay, goal is my choice name. Comma. Choice is actually. So choice is. I'll copy it I'll paste it here what are choices so you know that you can pass the choices as something like a um, compile and then like you have something known as a package and clean package something but these are three choice parameters i'm not using string parameter or anything i'm just uh, selecting the choice parameter Right, and close with the floor. That's all. And how to make use of these parameters inside here? Because that here, what happened? Right, you are just see, you are passing the clean package here, MVN clean package. Now it, it has to replace with the choice parameter. If you come back to your documentation, and if you see how he's using, you could see that actually he is using param actually, param, and the name of the choice name, param. You have to use. So what I have to do, guys? You come over here. Whenever you are in parameters, you have to always use a double quote. Actually. So what I have to do here, simple. So you have to just say, open the bracket, like that you have to follow the syntax. Params, one second, dollar of params, P-A-R-M-S dot of, is it? Uh, the choice name is Goal, actually, G -O -E -L. And it should always be a double quote. Because when I'm using parameters, you could see double quote here and ending with a double quote like this. So, like it means that actually now you need not to worry about whatever you are choosing, right? That will get replaced over here with the goal, and then like it will get executed, right? So, shall we push this and I try to execute now? Yes, let's see if it will work or not. So, hold a second, okay? Pauses, uh, and I think it should be. Ended with the bracket. Yes, I missed it actually. Yeah. 
send it to the bracket actually correct and then like okay send to the bracket comma 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 clean package yeah perfect yeah so there is no error here right name colon goal comma charges colon yeah this is perfect actually so i'll save this actually so once i save it you know variable well that i need to do a push actually so i'll just say git add dot git commit even m uh, added choice parameter parameter specify the file okay. and then say git push origin main so enter so tech leads 23 that is a username and the password i have a key with me so this is a key actually copy it just paste so guys now you have pushed it now come back to your jenkins job here you know very well that you are already having a jenkins job where is jenkins job you already morning executed what is that spring pet clinic demo one or the declared spring pet this is what it is now if you click on here here you are not getting any build with parameters for the first time you have to run like that only build now okay so it could see that it has triggered it it has triggered the job that's fine it is going on no credential specified yeah it is going on now it has succeeded next time now first time you have to run it and when you check clicking here now you could see that it is showing with a build with parameters okay now you click on this build with parameters now you could say that you have got the goal you can go to the anything clean package you can go and just say build now see it has triggered the job now first time it will not show because this option was not there it was only build now next time when you are doing right it will show the build now see because inside the inside it you are using a choice parameter see so what is the guide you are passing you are passing the uh, clean package right where is a clean package adding a choice parameters and all see can you see here you are actually passing a clean package and now it see that it is job is running i think it is already completed also correct so in this way you can actually use the parameters within your uh, within your official project or within your declarative or pipeline projects is it clear till here okay this is a simple example actually <clears throat> okay good <clears throat> now what is the next thing actually there are many things are there which i can uh, teach in the parameters actually but as of now this basic thing is enough so in upcoming sessions i will be showcasing few more examples like how i can effectively use the parameters actually like for example uh, how when i will explain now once we complete the upstream and downstream project right in that after that right i'll be able to give a hint of how this parameters uh, you know plays a very vital role and how from one job to other job you can pass the parameter basically you need to make it as a global uh, variable or global parameter how to make so that if you are passing it passing the variable from one job to other job right that variable should basically it should be a global variable so basically what happened right if it is a linux what you will do you know, you'll try to make that variable as a global by exporting it actually so you'll use export on the variable name so many times in industry you could see that uh, when the people uh, devops engineer are writing the free shell projects or they are writing the pipeline projects right so they will be heavily using this parameters and uh, and also you know that uh, you will be doing lot of post build activity in the post build activity you might call some other job right whatever the first job has has executed right the first job whatever the execution output is there that you will be assigning to some variable name and that the entire value of the variable or the value you will be passing to the next post build jobs so while passing that value you need to pass via the variable and that variable should be a global variable and you need to export it like that you will be heavily using in the industry so it is very important that we always play around a lot with this parameter so that uh, you will get to know about how exactly things works in the when you are having a parameters in your projects actually so this is a simple thing which i have told you now later in upcoming sessions i will show you how i will be using effectively all these parameters and whatever i said now right exporting and all i will give an example so that you will understand really how exactly we can use this parameter is it clear okay now so what is the next now so next is something is nothing but your upstream and downstream projects after the parameter this is also very important upstream and downstream projects okay. 
So, so like for example, let us assume that we need to achieve certain something like, uh, let's assume we configure, uh, we configure the Jenkins job like in the following way. Right. For example, you are having a job one, some job. And once the job one is completed, automatically one is completed. Once the job one is successfully executed, you need to invoke the job two. Once the job execution is completed, you need to invoke the job three. It means that it depends. Suppose this job one is failed, then it will not call the job two. And when the job two is not executed, then the job three will never get called. So it, it is depend upon the previous job. So it means that always job two is depend upon the job one execution. If the job one is success, then only the job two will be triggered. And similarly, job three will get executed only when the job two is successfully get executed. So right. So what happened, right? You can achieve the upstream and down through the upstream and downstream. So there are two methods are there. <coughs> <coughs> two ways of conferring, <coughs> conferring upstream and downstream. Okay, what we'll do, we will try to create a job actually, like the same job. Like for example, we'll try to create a with the same name, job one, job two, job three. So what I will do, I'll go to the Jenkins here. I'll go to my Jenkins job. So let me do one thing. Let me create a folder, something like I'll go to a new item, uh, something like uh, upstream and downstream demo, something, and I will create a folder like that. Inside the folder, I will create a job one, job two, job three. So I just created a folder. So upstream and uh, downstream stops. So same thing can here and you can apply and save it. So here you have created a folder. Yes, can you see here? It is a folder. Inside the folder, you can create a number of jobs actually. Like for example, I'm creating a new item. So I, I'll be creating three jobs like job one, job two, job three. So I'll just say job one and I'll make it as a free sale projects. Click on the free sale projects and go, okay. Now here what happened, right? I will come over here directly to the build step. And I'll go to the execute shell and I'll just say that echo uh, dollar or uh, echo just say uh, job one is executed. Something is executed. And then you will give something like a sleep of some 15 seconds. 15 seconds. So this is a job actually. Now, so save and apply. Same thing, what I will do that, I'll go to upstream down to job folder. You have one job one. Same thing, what I will do that, I will try to do a, what I will do that, I will try to create a job two. Job two. So I'll make it as a free shell project. I'll come over here and I'll say, okay. So what you are doing that, the job two, what you're doing that, you are, you are making the job two to be executed in your, node one, so you're specifying a label here. In the node one, you are executing this job two. You can run anywhere. I'm restricting to run here. Come down. I need to just do a execute shell, right? Echo, job two is executed successfully. And you are giving a sleep of some 15 seconds. Apply and save it. So now again, what you're doing, you're calling a, you are creating a job three. Top three, special project, come down, just say okay. So right, and here also you're restricting the job to be run, where you have to run, you're running to the JDK 17. Okay, under the node two, you want to run it, okay. Come down here, go to the build step, execute the shell, echo, what is it guys? Job three is executed successfully, whatever the message you want to type, and then you are making it to sleep for 15 seconds and apply and save it. So now guys, they're having these three jobs actually. So how you can achieve the up and down downstream? You can achieve, achieve the up and downstream with the help of two methods. There are two options are there, two methods are there. So what are the first option? 
first option is nothing but your post build actions so with the help of a post build actions you can actually uh, trigger the next job actually so what you will do here you go over here and you go to, you click on to the job one and here you go to the configure okay what is saying that rajesh if the job one is success executed my requirement is that i need to call the job two so what i am going to do come over here and if you go to the post build action i think i'll add this if I go to the post build action here can you see that post build action you could see that build other projects build other projects this is the first way of configuring build the project uh, build the other projects okay now what i will do i will give as a job two here i'll give the job two now when the job two should get triggered only if the trigger only if the build state means that if only the job one has this is successfully executed then only the job two has to get called and i'll just say save and apply Similarly, I'll go to the job two. So you already made to be restricted to be run under the your JDK eight here because job two is running under the JDK eight label, which is number node one. And you will say that Rajesh, after the job two success executed, it has to invoke automatically to job three. Okay, what you will do? You will go to the post build actions. Come over here, click here, same thing. Build other projects, and here you will give the name as a job three. So oh, it means that you are calling the job three after the job two is successfully executed. Apply and save. Now, if you go here, guys, if you see here, this is the jobs you are having. Can you see here? You are having executors. This is nothing but this is your Jenkins executor. This is a node one executor and this is a node two executor. Just see how things happens. When I trigger the job one, you could see that job one is getting job two is getting triggered after the job one is completed, but the job two is executed into the node one. After the job two is getting executed, it is going to invoke the job three, and the job three will get executed in node two. Just see here. I click the job one. Now you could see that job one has been triggered in your in your Jenkins server only, right? And you could see that it is executing echo uh, something like uh, job one is successfully executed. After that, it will wait for some fifteen seconds. You have mentioned the fifteen seconds sleep. After that, you could see that it is invoking the job two. Because under the post build actions, the job two is triggered. You could see that in the node one now, the second job will get called job two. <clears throat> see, the job two has called in the node one. Once the job two is triggered, completed, the job three will be called in the node two. Because you are given a fifteen seconds, so we need to wait for the fifteen second to complete. Right, the sleep, right? Or else I got a given five second or ten second. That's fine. But you could see that, yeah. Now the job three will get triggered in the node two. See, it is triggered. So this is nothing but these are nothing but we call the upstream and downstream project. Means that after a successful of one project, you what you need to do further? Okay, I need to invoke. I need to call some other job. Then in the post build action, you can call the post builds or the post build post build jobs. You can call. You can invoke any other job, right? So this has successfully got executed, guys. If you go to the job one, now you could see that for the job one, the downstream project for the job one is job two. Okay, it means that after job one completes, job two will get triggered. Similarly, if you go here for the job two, once the job two is completed, the upstream for the job two is job one, but the downstream of the project uh, for it is job three. Oh, it means that once the job one is executed, then this job two will get called. And once the job two is completed, then the job three will get called like that. Actually, right? And these are all the result. Anyway, these are all the build results. So this has triggered it, and this is just, uh, you know, displaying this uh, string, and then it is sleeping for fifteen seconds, right? So like this, you are calling one after the other. So got it, right? So job three after it completes, nothing to be done actually. That's all. We are not doing anything, right? So you know very well that under the under the post build actions here. You need to use this build other projects, right? So this is the first method. So under the post build actions, build other projects. Build other projects. You need to click on and you need to configure it. <coughs> Clear? Now suppose you are not doing it here actually. So suppose this is job three. Okay, you will just. Uh, Uh, I mean, here you are not doing a post build action for job three, but there is a second method. What is the second method? It is also simple. This is the first option. The second option is what? 
Second, right? Second option. Now I could see it under the second option, guys. Here, under the build trigger. See, build after other projects are built. So when the job three has to get built, it should get built if the job two has successfully executed. Like this. And then save and apply. Right. Similarly, if you come over here for the job two, same thing. Come down here, configure. This is the second option. So under the build trigger section, you have this option, build other projects or build after other projects are built. So you can go and you can remove this uh, post build actions. You don't want this. You can even use this also because usually always people will use this option only always. Post build actions only, they will try to call the other jobs actually. But yeah, in some places you could see even that they'll be using this also. They'll be using that build other projects. So when the job tool get called, Job two should be called whenever the job one is successfully executed. Like that. Is it clear, guys? Like this. So this is the second option. I'm not running it, but I'm just telling you. So this is all about the upstream and downstream. Even though it's a very small topic, but just I want I want to just uh, you know let you know that there are two ways for doing achieving this. So later, uh, maybe after one or two sessions. I will be showing uh, different projects actually where, you know, like I'll be configuring this, you know, upstream and the downstream and, uh, and all, right? Where you'll get much more, you know, detailed information, you'll get it actually. Is it clear? Till here. Okay. Good. Now, so we completed these two small topics actually, but I'll be giving some more examples in the upcoming sessions. Don't worry. So what are the other things we will configure now? We will try to learn about the Sonar Cube actually. How to install the Sonar Cube and like how to configure the Sonar Cube. Okay. So now what we are going to do now, guys, we are we'll be learning about the static code analysis tool. And the static code analysis tool, one of the very important tools is not what you are. Sonar Cube. This is a very important tool, guys, actually, which the industry uses. Most of the industries they use this Sonar Cube only for the static code analysis tool, actually. Okay. So, so what we'll be doing today, guys, we will be only installing, configuring, actually, and we will try to trigger one job. Okay. So, later tomorrow, we will do further more analysis, we'll do on the static code analysis, and we'll try to build the quality gates. How to build a quality gates and all we'll see later okay so today our our uh, our requirement is to only install the configure install the sonar cube configure with the jenkins and just run one job where it is going to uh, you know create all kind of a sonar cube jobs actually it means that it's going to build or it's going to create all kind of a uh, you know uh, code analysis everything it's going to build it actually that's what we'll be seeing today okay so here static code analysis let me write down something like uh, you know, like static code uh, uh, analysis tool. So basically, it's a uh, static code analysis tools can try to suggest the best, uh, how we can say, the best practices in key areas like. So static code analysis can try to suggest to the best practices in the key areas like what are the key areas? Like, for example, architecture and the design. Comments, suppose you have put some comments and all like, right, in your code or the developer has put a lot of comments, right? So there also, it will give you the best practice, which are the best practices you need to use that. That is what the static code analysis will give the hint to the developer actually, right? What are the different coding styles or coding rules which you follow? That also gives a hint actually potential bugs. If there are a lot of potential bugs are there in your code, that also the sonar cube, right? We'll try to get the information and will give it duplications of a lot of codes. Repeated out duplications are there. How you can write a best test, unit test test, right? That also your static code analysis tool or number sonar cube will give the details. Of, and of course, whatever, if there is any complexity in your code, right? Complexity in the code, even that also your Analysis tool will give a best suggestion for the developers. So, so for achieving all these things, you know that I'll be using the Sonar Cube. So, no, Sonar Cube is an open source uh, 
or open source or we can say open source platform for managing the code quality okay so there are multiple versions of the sonar cube and we will be uh, using the community edition community edition okay so now if you go to the net guys if you go to the net and if you just uh, search for sonar cube Let's do a sonar cube. You can go to the official document of the sonar cube, like here. If you come down, you could see that there's an official document site sonar cube. Click on this. So it is showing that 9.8. Oh, it means that this is the latest version which is having. It is giving some hint, right? So this is what it is. So I want to install configure the sonar cube, right? So what I can do that I need to first see the requirement. If I go to the requirement, guys. If you go to the requirement, it says that your sonar cube requires at least minimum 2 GB of RAM or else 1 GB of RAM for the operating system itself. Basically, minimum 1, 2 GB of RAM is required, right? And uh, it has given all kind of details. If you're going for the enterprise edition, right, you need a little bit more, uh, you know, higher configuration of your server. It is required, right? And always to install the sonar cube, you should install the Java first, okay? So always the Java should be above 11 or it should be above 17. That's what it says. The sonar cube requires a java 17 and the sonar cube scanner requires a java version 11 or 17 okay good and you could see that here you are it is saying that open jdk 11 is used for the scanner there is one more component is there scanner that also it requires open jdk 17 right or else you can go with the gre or open jdk we go with the gre already in our system 17 is configured right now if you come down it means that for the for after installing the sonar cube and all that you need to even install the database also so you have a different types of database. You can use any one of the database. Either you can go with the PostgreSQL or the Microsoft SQL Server, or else you can go with the Oracle. So I'm not going with the Oracle, or else I'm not going with this uh, micro, Microsoft SQL Server. I'll go the, with the PostgreSQL. So what are the versions which a PostgreSQL will support for it? It will support from 11 onwards. Below 11, right? 8, 7, and all. Uh, that will not be support to the current existing Sonar Cube version. So the current existing Sonar Cube version is something 9.9 9.8 9 whatever is there right so that supports this are the different version 15 14 13 12 1 below this it will not support so you have to go with any one of this version to install in your system it means that wherever you're installing the sonar cube right under the same server even you have to install the postgresql server also postgresql SQL also now if you come down what are the things it has a requirement okay it has something like a web browser so we need to use the latest web browser and all Okay, and in Linux, if you're using it, it is saying something like a, in your running a Linux, you should make sure you have to run or you should have a VM max map count is this value. File system max is greater than this. <coughs> These are some of the limits it is showing actually. These are the limits, Linux limits actually. Okay. Okay, that's what if you see U limit, you can configure everything, all these values with the help of U limit command. Okay, so I'll be showing those command also later now. And uh, what are the things? That's all guys. So more or less, okay, this is what we required, right? We required a Java, we required the PostgreSQL, and as well as we required your, uh, uh, you know, like uh, PostgreSQL. Yeah, pretty much that much, simple, right? And you need a little bit higher configuration of the server. So what I can do here, wherever I'm installing the node to, or I can even go and install the Sonar Cube into the Jenkins server itself, where the Jenkins is running. But I will not do that. Let me do this. Let me create one server, a new server, uh, I'll even take the t2.medium as a server and then I'll install the sonar cube in that uh, server actually. Okay. Now, so you are having so many different versions of the sonar cubes. Okay. You go and set up and if you come to the overview, it says that what are the overviews, what are the requirements here? It is already given the requirements. We saw it actually. Right. And if you come down, you could see that install the server. So this is what the component actually. If you install the sonar cube, right. You'll get this. So database is not, but it is a PostgreSQL which will be doing. So for after installing the Sonar Cube, right? You'll get internally it get all these components. So this is basically architecture diagram actually, right? This is architecture diagram of your Sonar Cube, right? If you come down, you has given various things, right? Installing the database, yeah, this is what we discussed, right? And install the Sonar Cube from the zip file, okay? 
where exactly I can found the, uh, you know, the community edition. Okay, let me check, guys. Uh, yeah, can you click here? Can you see it? There's something like community. Click on this. Click on this community. I think it will take you to that page, actually. Okay, not this. Or else you have somewhere products and all. Okay. So not give updates. Where is it, guys? Sunar Cube. Okay, I'll just say download Sonar Cube. Let me do a download Sonar Cube. Yeah, this is what I need. Yes, this is what I need. So here you're having a community edition, <clears throat> developer edition, enterprise edition, and data center edition. Apart from this community edition, others all are paid actually. And if you come down, you could see that what exactly the community edition or the free edition will do. It can do a lot of scanning. <coughs> it, it does 19 languages code. It can do a it can do a scan actually. So what are those 19 languages? See Java, C plus C JavaScript, TypeScript, Terraform, Docker. You could see that the list is very big. And what are the other features it provides? Oh, detects bugs and vulnerability, review security hotspot in your code, track code smells and fix for it, right? So it's you could see that actually it provides a lot of features. The free itself will provide a lot of features actually. So and he's saying that 20,000 plus companies are using actually. But whether developer edition or enterprise or data center edition, it provides much more features actually. So that's what many of the companies will go with either with the enterprise edition or either with the developer edition, they will go with. And this is what many of the things are there, which uh, even, you know, the community edition, right, will not uh, provide those features here. So anyhow, we are just learner, right? So we can go with the community edition. We are not going with this actually. So you can go to a here, download for free. It means that you can do a right click, copy the link address, come over here, and you can just say that um, cube download link. So this is what the link actually. Good. And uh, how to get this place? So sonar cube download page so what is the link for this this is the page actually so uh, what you have to do here that whenever you want to install the sonar cube sonar cube installation is little bit tight it means that you need to strictly follow all the steps whatever Sonar Cube documentation has provided. Okay, so what I have did, right? I went through all the documentation of the installation steps and all, and uh, then I came up with my notes of installing the Sonar Cube. So these are the how many steps are there, guys? There are something around uh, 20 steps are there to complete your Sonar Cube installation. So I'll be following up this whole 20 steps to do it. It is pretty simple. It will just take around 15 to 20 minutes to complete it. Just see what I'm doing now. Okay, so what I will do, guys? Now I'll go with the New server now, so I'll go with the EC2 instance. So I'll go with the EC2 instance. So I will not be installing the Sonar Cube in Node One, Node Two, or Jenkins. Let me create a new server itself actually. So I'll go to the launch instance. So I'll just mention as a Sonar Cube server, something Sonar Cube server. Come down here. I will go with the Ubuntu itself and uh, try to. Assign this 20.04. I'll go with the 20.04 version. And here I'll go with the t2.medium. I will not go with the t2.micron because it's a very low configuration. I'll go with the t2.medium. This is fine for me. Even though it is low, but still it is fine because I'm getting a 4 GB of RAM memory. That's the reason. So Sonar Cube re requires a lot of memory. So that's the reason I'll go with the t2.medium. So key pair, click on here. You go with the my new key. Okay. And what else other things? Go to the security group, select the existing security group, click on this. You'll go with the my uh, new HG security groups. Come down. Is there anything is there? Nothing is there. Just launch the instance. Okay, guys. I think it is coming up. Hold a second. Yeah. So till here, you do have any doubts, guys? Naresh, Bharat, anyone? Sanjay sir. No, Ravish, I'm good. Okay. Uh, good. Uh... Good so today we will be only installing and configuring. That's all. That itself will take some time. Half an hour, 45 minutes it will take. So come back here. 
Okay. So it is up and running. Yes. Always you make sure that, sir, whenever the server is up and running, wait for some time so that the status check will come like this. Two by two checked. Okay. Sometime what happened, right? If it is in initialized state, right? So then what happened, right? It will it will take some time to log in. You might say that, okay, Rajesh, I'm not able to log into server. You have to wait for some time. Sometime it allows, sometime it doesn't allow. Okay. So I think I can log into the server now. So just click on this and get the public IP. Go to your downloads, open the putty session, same stuff. Ubuntu at the rate, view the IP, public IP, and just say open. Accept it. Yes, you're able to log into this soon after. So same thing, first you do a sudo apt update. You give this command. So this document, guys, I will share with you today. Hmm? I'll share with the WhatsApp today to you all so that you'll be able to understand. Sudo apt update, okay? As well as in our uh, common SharePoint also, right? Where the Google Drive, right? There also I will upload this document. So after doing a sudo update, apt update, now what I will do that, I will do certain other things. Like I will do, let me configure the servers, right? Sudo uh, hostname, ctl, get hyphen hostname, sonar hyphen server, sonar server actually. Right, and I'll give a bash. Good. So you are under. So you have changed your host name actually. So coming back to here, documentation. You need to strictly follow this documentation. What are you saying? Right. So you could see that I need to install the Java. I need to install the PostgreSQL. I need to start it. I need to set the server. I need to create a user account. Everything you need to just strictly follow this. So what you are doing here, you just try to execute all the steps. Okay, I already exit this step. I need not to go with this. I, I'll exit this one. So you're installing the unzip command, unzip uh, package. So you're installing the unzip package. Okay. After that, you are installing the open JDK 11, or you can even install open JDK 17 also, 11 or 17. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so the OpenJDK is 11, or about Java 11 is installed. After that, you need to install the PostgreSQL. Now, if you see the document, you saw the earlier in the document that it expects the Sonar Cube to have, uh, you know, like uh, the version it should have of minimum of, uh, you know, like uh, 13, The what is the requirement, see? You need to have the Postgre in this version. It could be either 15, 14, 13. So to do that, what I'm doing now, I'm just checking what are the existing direct PostgreSQL uh, you know, uh, version is available, right? If I'm trying to install. So just exit this command. You could see that it is showing as it is a 12 actually. It means the 12 version is already there. So whether the 12 version is supporting, yes, it is supporting. So you can go with this installing of this. PostgreSQL. So for doing that, what I'll do, I'll go to this next one. You could see that I'm installing the PostgreSQL as well as PostgreSQL hyphen contribute. These are the two package I'm installing it here. Come over here, copy it, and then paste it. So the installation is completed. Now you need to restart the service. Come over here. You just first to do an enable. And then you need to start the PostgreSQL service. Enter.
so it is started so how to check it so to just say status so you could see that it is active up and running okay and then like this is done this step is done the next is that actually you need to set uh, you need to create a user account actually okay you can set the password by default what happened the postgres postgres uh, user account is already created by default when you are installing it you are just setting a password so let me copy this and paste it here it ask you for the password i will give you the same password p o s t g r e s p o s t g r e s so you have set the password actually so by default a user account is already created so just setting a password okay fine good so you can note it down also set the password as post greases same password you have set it here yeah okay after that you need to switch to the post users and create a user by name sonar okay so just blindly copy this step see sudo or else a su hyphen post greases see it is asking for the password Give the password as Postgres only. P O S T G R E S. Yes. Now you are logged in here, so you could see that you are into this user now. Now what is doing? Create a user. Create user Sonar. Just say copy this command and paste it. So it has created a user by name Sonar, and you are just run this command. P S P S Q L. See, you have got inside the Postgres, uh, you know, database. You have got inside the Postgres database. in the postgres database inside that you need to just run this instructions just copy this and run this and then copy this and run this now to just run this two instructions after that you need to exit out from the psql shell psql how to do it slash q slash q and say enter and you can even do exit from that user also postgres now you came back to your ubuntu user now so after doing this you need to download the sonar so what you have to do that you need to download so where you to download guys you need to you can download anywhere i'll do a w get and you could see that already i had uh, copied uh, the version and you could see that 9.8.0 this is the latest version which is available so i'll do one thing i'll copy this copy this and just paste this so i'm installing the sonar cube of 9.8 version and say enter so you are downloading the source package so it is a big size huh? it is 30 mb size i think ls the sonar cube is downloaded you can just do a du hyphen so just verifying okay to it is sorry it is 276 mb actually it's a very big file so after doing that you need to extract you need to unzip and extract it so what you are doing you are just doing a sudo unzip of this and you are extracting it to the slash opt directory see copy this command and execute this let me clear the screen and execute this see it is extracting where it is extracting under the opt directory can you see So if you go to the cd slash opt, there you could see that see it has been extracted here. Okay, good. Next, what you are doing? You are renaming this sonar cube now even nine point eight whatever to the sonar cube only. Or it means that you are moving it actually, moving the slash opt with the name as a sonar cube only. See, enter and say l and say ls. See, it has been renamed. This has been renamed to sonar cube now. Okay, good. After doing that, what he is saying that create a non sudo user, sudo Linux user. You have to just execute this command. sudo add user sonar q. Come back here and just say sudo add user sonar q. Enter. So it is asking for the password. I will give the name as a s o n a r q. Same password I am giving. S o n a r q. Sonar q sonar q. Just say enter. Enter 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 and say why. You have created a user by name sonar q. Good. <coughs> and then like you need to give the ownership also so just copy this command right so you are change the ownership see if you do a ls hyphen ld of slash opt sonar cube see it is under the roots privilege but you need to change to the sonar cube privilege that's the reason you need to copy this command copy this command completely paste it now if you do ls hyphen ld of sonar cube now now it's there that Earlier it was root root user ID is group group ID is group. Now it has been changed to Sonar Cube Sonar Cube. This is what I needed actually. Okay, good. Twelve step is done. Now what happens? Sonar Cube the uses the Elastic Search service. So to increase it, you need to just blindly copy this first command and enter. 
printer. Now you could see that I also use this also. Now you might ask Rajesh, why I'm not using this? I will tell you later. Okay, many times what happened, right? Whenever people are installing the sonar cube, they will tend to run this command with this value 262411. So I, I also execute with this only. Later I will show you like when I'll be using this value. Okay. So right now you just park aside this that I'm executing this first first command. Okay, and then I'm exiting. That's all. Also, oh, you have set the virtual memory max of this number value. So you are assigning a virtual memory actually. Okay, fine, good. After that, what he says that guys, he's saying that under slash opt sonar cube conf, there is a <coughs> there is a sonar dot properties there. I need to edit this file also. Okay, so I'll just copy this complete command sudo nano something like he's saying. I'll clear the screen first. Open it. And run it so it has opened this file okay what is saying that oh sonar dot jdbc dot username make it as a sonar okay jdbc okay i'll just search for jdbc okay or else what i will do that i will just quit from this file i'll open the same file with the vi editor instead of using nano open this file so what is saying that JDBC dot username? So let me search for JDBC. So where is it? JDBC dot username. See here it is saying sonar dot JDBC dot. Oh, yeah, he's saying that I can edit. I can go and edit this file only. This line only I can edit. But I'll do one thing, guys. I will just try to add this line. Why I need to edit that line? And it will just add this line. Let me add this line. Good. I've added this line. Now here also the password is also the JDBC dot password. Here also the JDBC password. So I'm giving this password. I mean, I'm just adding this. Okay, good. After that, what is there? JDBC URL, something JDBC post is there. So if you come down, you'll understand it. If you come down, can you see somewhere here? JDBC sonar.jdbc.url, see? JDBC.url, something, blah, 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 he's giving. I will not edit it. Rather than what I will do that, I will add a, the same line only here only. The same line, I'll copy, picture and add it here. Okay, good. After that, something Java additions ops is there. You have to give as an option as a hyphen server. Okay, where is the Java additions? Come over here. Okay, where is Java additions? JDBC. Uh, I think it should be somewhere down only. Let's see where it is there. Yeah, here you could see that sonar dot Java dot Java addition. Uh, sorry, sonar dot web dot Java addition. You could say sonar dot. So same thing, I'll copy it here. I will not edit that line. Instead, I will add the line. Okay, and then paste this. Here it is. So these four values, you need to change in your sonar.property file. And what I've written, change the following. Good. And then save this file. Okay, I'll save this file. Okay, you'll save this file. Good. After that, what is saying? Configure the sonar cube as services. It means that you, if you want to make it or enable as a service, you need to create a sonar.service file actually. So again, you need to copy this file. Copy, I'm uh, sorry, copy this command. And just paste it and enter. Whatever we have given here, just to blindly copy this content, whole content from here to here. Copy it and paste it here. And then say control X, say Y and say enter. So you have created this file with the name sonar.property under this path actually. Okay. Now enable and start the sonar cube. So you have to just do a, you have to run this command everything. So first you need to do a enable. And now you need to do a start of sonar. And then you need to check the status of the sonar. See, you have started it. Now the Sonar cube server is up and running. Is it clear, guys? Still here? So we just blindly followed the document, whatever we have. After that, you can access the Sonar server by providing the IP address, and always the Sonar cube will run, will be always be available or to be running under the port number 9000 so i'll go back to the server i know that i'm having this sonar cube server so let me click on it let me copy the public ip address 
paste it over here. Let me close the other stuff, guys. I don't want this. I don't want this. I don't want this. This I'll just paste it and give the port number nine thousand. Now, could see that the sonar is up and running now. See, so it is asking for the username and password. By default, the default username is always admin, and the password is also admin. So try to give the username as admin, password also admin only, and just say login. As soon as you log in, it will ask you to provide a new password. So you can give a pro, pa, new password as admin at the rate one two three. So what was the old password? Admin was the old password, and what is the new password? Password A A D M I N at the rate one two three. A D M I N at the rate one two three, and just say update. So once you're updating, you could see that guys see you're able to land into the Sonar Cube, you know home page actually. Now here. Now you can configure the Sonar Cube everything with all these servers. Actually, you can either configure through the GitHub or from the GitLab or the Bitbucket or the or you can even do it manually also. So right now I'm not doing all these things. Okay, you could see many other things. You can go to the projects here. You can go to the issues. Nothing is there, right? No, no projects are there here. Go to the rules. Okay, there is no rules are set already. These rules are already there, which you will be seeing later after some point of time. What are these? All these things are. Go to the quality profiles. So already some existing quality profiles are already there. I'll be using some of the quality profiles also for uh, for uh, getting the uh, quality code uh, code checks actually. Then I'll go with the quality gates. Already some default uh, gate is already there. Quality gate is already there. That default name is number Sonar Way. And these are nothing but these are all the conditions which are already been there already. So these are by default is stored. And here if you come to the administration, yeah. You will find certain things like you need to. What are the if you want to authenticate it? What are the external analyzer, DevOps integration, authentication like that? You have Jacobo. Some of the settings are there here, which you can do into the administration. Now, but my main import is that actually I need to create a token. Actually, I need to create a token. To create a token, what I have to do, guys? You have to click on this administration. Here you have to go to the my account. Under the my account, you have to go to the security, or uh, yeah, not security. Profile, uh, security. Uh, hold a second. Where I have to go? Security only have to go. Huh? Here only. Yeah, correct. I'm correct. Security. Here you could see that you have to generate the token actually. So, what it says that you need to generate a token. So, what we are saying here after installing Sonar Cube, we need to generate the token. So you have to go to the administration, my account. Under that you have security. Under that generate token. Same thing. I came over here. So now I need to generate a token. So I'll do one thing. I'll give the. Uh, I need to give some name. I'll give just give the Jenkins only. What is the type of selection you want to do? User token or a global analysis token? Okay. So let me use something like user token only. I will do. And when it expires, thirty days. Okay. And then generate it. So now we could see that it has generated the token. Just copy this token. And paste it over here. So this is a new token. Yes, of course. This is a new token, and this is a token. Always you have to place this token because after once you miss this page, right, you will not be able to get the token actually. So you can either copy it here, either I can I can copy it here, and you can paste it like this anywhere like this. Here. So this is all, guys. The part of the configuration actually. Is it clear? So I have executed all those twenty steps. Hold a second, guys. Uh, I'm getting one call actually. Okay, so now what I will be doing that I need to configure now the Sonar Cube is ready now, right? I need to just configure the Sonar Cube with my Jenkins actually. So to do that actually, what I have to do guys first, uh, we have to install the uh, Sonar Cube scanner uh, plugin. So for that you have to go to the Manage Jenkins. So, so what we did right here. So 
follow the sonar cube installation document to install and generate the token after that after that configure integration of uh, sonar cube with jenkins so to do that first you need to install the plugins actually first you install the plugins what are the plugins you need to install it now if you go back here if you go to the manage jenkins come over here and you could see that manage plugins right and if you see that if you go to the available plugin and just uh, search for sonar and you see that there's something on like the sonar cube and sonar quality gets right right here what happened right you can click on this and you can install it actually but you could see that there's a sonar quality gate is there which is very old actually four years back this came so never ever go with a very older uh, plugins guys okay never over go with that because they might they might have removed the support or something so hence what happened you always go to with the latest uh, plugin which is available or which is provided so what i will do that i have to install this sonar cube uh, scanner actually so click on this restart with with install without restart How come it's so fast to install? Because usually it takes time to install it. Because ours is a titular medium, right? Some are very heavy plugins. It needs a lot of time to install it. Okay. It's installed. So what I'll do? I log in into it. Okay. I log into the Jenkins server. Okay. Log in the Jenkins server. So if you go to the man manage Jenkins, go to the manage plugins. And go to the installed plugins. So here I think it is installed already. Just to check for the sonar. See, sonar cube is already installed now it is installed right it is installed now now how to configure it so come back to the manage jenkins okay you have some this a configure system click on this configure system okay and if you scroll down somewhere you can see something like a sonar see sonar cube server can you see a sonar cube server correct so what you'll do, you have to just do all sonar cube server, sonar cube installation, add sonar. Okay, let me see if there is anything as a sonar. Uh, fingerprint, global, GitHub. No, I think that is the one. This is, yeah, this is the mail. Yeah, that's all. So after installing the sonar cube scanner only, you will get this sonar cube actually. You'll get the sonar cube server. So here what happened, add sonar. And here you have to give the name. What is that name? Uh, something sonar underscore something can give latest or something. Or whatever the version which is installed, right? Uh, sonar uh, nine point nine, right? We can even give that also. So I'm giving this as a name as a sonar underscore latest. Fine. So what is the URL? I'll just say HTTP double colon, and uh, I will give the private IP of the sonar cube server. So I'll go to the private server, click on this, and Come over here, give the colon, and you have to give colon 9000 like this. Okay. Now, and after that, you could see that the server authentication token is there. So you need to provide the token. You know that I have generated this token, right? This token you need to provide as an authentication, actually. You click on here, nothing is there. Okay, add it. Okay, why it is not showing, guys? It should show it actually. Okay. Nothing is there. Okay, fine. I'll do one thing, I'll do in the other way now. So let this page as it is, let it be. I will do open in a new tab. I'll go to the manage Jenkins and here I will see the manage credentials. Click on here. Okay, you are already having some manage credentials. System is there. Uh, uh, update. Add credentials. Yeah, this is what I need. Add credentials. So here, because this is a token actually, so this is nothing but it's a secret text actually. So what I have to do that, you have to click on here. Can you see your secret text? Yes, secret text. So what you have to do here? Okay, global scope is what? Nothing. What is the secret? 
secret is not, but this is a secret key. You have to copy the secret key. Copy this, give the secret key. What is an ID? Something. Sonar. Let's say Sonar. Uh, sonar server or something. Sonar auth sonar authentication. Auth something can give any name. Description also can give the same stuff. And then create it. <coughs> so here you have created a son uh, you have created a credential with the with the kind known as a secret secrets text actually. Now you come back here. I think now it has to show it. See, or else you will refresh this page, reload this page again. So come back here into your sonar add sonar, right? Give the name sonar underscore latest. Uh, give HTTP colon double colon. Give the IP address of your sonar. Public, you can give private anything. You give it the private, copy it, and give colon 9000. And here, server authentication, you click on this, see, it is showing here. Oh, now it is authenticated. That's all this. Now you have to say apply and save. This is how you need to configure it, actually. Simple. Clear? Yes. Done. So now, now you say that, Rajesh, I want to run a static code analysis for my Spring Pet Clinic, which you have executed in the morning time. You remember in the morning time, we had executed his job, right? So basically what happened right here, if you come back to your node two, here you're having a Spring, Spring Pet Clinic. And if you open the Jenkins file, and you could see that actually that this is my, uh, you know, like uh, Jenkins file where, you know, like uh, uh, you have configured to run your declarative pipeline for your Spring Pet Clinic. Now you say that along with this Rajesh, I want to even run the sonar cube now. It means that the static code analysis, uh, you know, like uh, the report has to be generated now. How to do that actually? How to run it? So what I will do, guys, let me do one thing. Let me uh, go back to uh, here. Uh, Jenkins pipeline syntax. OK, I'll go to that. Click on it. And here I will go to the reference document. See, I'll go to the reference document. Syntax pipeline reference document. OK, good. Here, uh, reference or steps reference, actually, not syntax, but steps. Here, can you search for Sonar? Oh, Sonar plugin, good. Code, Scola plugin, OK, good. Good. What else is there, sir? Report, cube audit. No, not this one. I'm looking for something else. OK, Sonar cube. Sonar, Sonar, Sonar linter. This is not I required. OK, I required this one, sir. Can you see here something like a with Sonar cube E and V? See, Sonar cube scanner for Jenkins. This is, we have already installed this plugin. I need this one now. Later, I will show you how to set for the quality gets. This I have to use. But right now, I want to have a sonar cube environment. So just do a right click and open this. Beautiful. OK, I will go through this document now. So this is the with sonar cube. So what? I, how I need to configure means wherever you are doing a build job, wherever you are building build job, like MVN clean package, there you have to just pass the sonar colon sonar. OK, I got it. So it means that. I'll come back to my Jenkins job here. Jenkins job is sorry, uh, Jenkins file job here where you are. <coughs> Let me don't think I don't want this all parameters and all. I will uh, uh, remove this parameter. Let it be what is there in that. Let it be as it is. So here in the step, uh, uh, what I will do here, uh, build the code and sonar cube. Is it? Huh? Uh, Sonar cube analysis. Sonar cube analysis. Okay. And now what he's doing, guys, here, if you see the document carefully, he is using under the step using with the sonar cube ENV like this he's using. Okay, under that he's using this. Okay, fine. Let me do the same stuff. So under the steps, actually, what he's doing that. So I'll just copy this. With Sonar Cube. But you know that your Sonar Cube, what is the num what is the name you have given? Sonar underscore latest. Right. So that's what you have to give here. It should know, right? With sonar. So you have to just say sonar underscore latest. You remember here if you go to the configuration and if you go to the configure here, uh, if you go to the your manage Jenkins. 
and if you go to the configure system you know very well that i have set the sonar see can you see that what is the name sonar underscore same thing here if, if i'm giving sonar underscore rajesh but given i should have given the same name sonar underscore rajesh fine sir now after that what i will do that i'll just do a open bracket here so here if you see the document what the document says under the steps okay under the steps we are using the sonar cube fine okay open the bracket right and then like yeah that's all now under this so i'm just running this one that's all okay so after this okay so i'll do one thing i will not use this param now okay i'll just directly pass the mbn clean package okay and after that i will do a sonar colon sonar okay. and i'll be using single quote come down come yeah i repeat that's all so mvn clean package after the package is generated then you are running the sonar cube actually so now let us see whether the bracket is said okay this bracket is closed with this bracket okay let's see like step uh, under the okay one more is there so here you should uh, able to add here one more bracket close the bracket yes now it is perfect yes now it is perfect clear so if you want to keep it you can bid you can keep this post build or else if you want to remove remove it actually no problem here this way now what you will do that you will just say same thing git add jenkins file good git commit hyphen m added sonar cube analyze analysis something okay specify the file name and git uh, push origin main it leads 23 that's the user name password you know that i need to have a key so where is the key guys if you come up here i have this key this is my token this is the git key git right copy and paste it here okay you pushed it now now come over here you have a job here you have a job which is the job your declarative job okay it is still there actually because that you have a build with parameter something like that okay you can click on it and you can just say clean package and you can just do a build activity right so it is executing see you could see that this is the stage you see first declarative it is run after that source code check in will happen but if i want to see the log go and check the log here so if you click the log you could see that it has did the code it is doing a build activity here it has did a, it is downloading all the packages and all good let me go down quickly so it is running here it is running the test actually and after that do the build package after building the package you could see that it is actually running the sonar analysis it is it will run that actually from see sonar version see download all the plugins see it is actually generating the sonar see loading all active profiles and everything see it has loaded all this active profiles and everything see now it is processing everything yeah build is successful uh, everything is done good it has been success now now if you go to the sonar cube server where you are running right this is your sonar cube server if you come to the projects can you see here pet clinic job it has been passed the sonar analysis is passed you could see that actually the code coverage is 93% duplication is zero code smell yeah i think uh, let us wait it has to give us the details values actually right codes vulnerability a nothing is there means there is no vulnerability bugs even there is no bu bugs actually so this sonar cube is completely passed the sonar cube uh, sonar uh, code analysis result is completely passed in the next class what we will do right we will do a lot of uh, you know like we will add on or else we will try to build the open mrs project open mrs project has a lot of vulnerability it has a lot of security threats so here what happened right we will add a condition so that 
while the sonar cube is running right it will show for the spring pet clinic or else for it for the game of life or else for the open mr project try right, the the result will be failed state so it means that it couldn't undergo the sonar cube analysis test pass so the result will fail and because of uh, some many number of vulnerabilities or there are some code smells are there code coverage is not up to the expectation mark right so that's the reason you are making that project to fail actually so once this is failed you will report this issue to the developer saying that see our our sonar cube analysis you know that result self has failed hence we will not be able to approve your build so try to fix all this issue and then give a new build and then we are going to again build that uh, build that new code like that you will give information to the developer so after that what you will do see sir we will see what is the quality gates how we can set the quality gates and all in the next class is it clear till here guys okay okay raj yeah so what you have to do now you need to practice this the whole step and all so i'll be sharing this uh, document with you you need to just install it you can even install it here also in your jenkins server also because our jenkins server is already having a low configuration helps i am not going installing the sonar cube here i have created a separate server here correct but assume that your jenkins itself is having a very high configuration t2x large is there then in that case you can install the sonar even in your jenkins or you can install it no problem or as any one of the node node 1 node 2 if these are high configuration you can install sonar cube anywhere so this can be used docker container yes you can give sir you can install the sonar cube uh, in the docker container and you can make use of it that's what nowadays all people are doing in industry they are not installing everything in the server they are installing through the docker itself So, if you want, we will show that also how to install the Sonar Cube in a Docker container. The next class, we can show you. Yeah. Okay, guys. That's all for the day today, and uh, like uh, we will be continuing in the next week actually. Okay, next weekend, Saturday, Sunday, we'll continue with our session. So, okay. Any other questions? Sonar Cube. Practice, practice, practice. Yeah, yeah. Sonar Cube scanner. Yeah. This is what you need to install the plugin actually. and for the configuration you have to go with the manage uh, jenkins under that you have some there's a configure system so anyhow you have a video configure systems under that you need to go and you need to configure your sonar sonar installation is there you have to click there and you need to configure it that's all is it clear okay guys tell us then so we'll meet next weekend then hmm? thank you all bye thank you rajesh bye bye thank you thank you bye